What's up guys? In today's video, we are going to review this strategy that this guy is telling us. First thing first, I'm going to tell you that the strategy, yeah, it's uh, profitable and you can check this here. You can see that we started with 20,000 and we end up with almost 100,000. You see that it's not perfect because there are a lot of downs, but at least it's profitable. So let's see how the strategy works. The thing is that we have three indicators. The first one being the MACD, the second one being the stochastic, and the third one being the RSI. By the way, go to this channel, like go to his channel, Trade Pro. Like uh, the strategy is the following. So, for example, in the MACD, we have a cross which is telling us that uh, the market has to, to that we have to open a sell position, and we have to check if in that cross the the stochastic is between the 75 and the 25 values. So as you can see here in this cross, this is not happening. So this is why here he doesn't open a position. Another thing you have to check is that, for example, if you have to open a sell position, the RSI value has to be under the 50, uh, the 50 value. So that's, uh, for, for example, here you wouldn't be able to do that because it's uh, above that value. So here it opens that because there was a cross and the values are in the uh, between this, between the 75 and the 25, and the RSI is below 50. Here he opened a sell position. But you can also open uh, buy positions if, for example, let's see here, in this buy position there was a cross, wow, wow. There was a cross and uh, the values were between 25 and 75 and also their SI value was above 50. So that's the criteria behind how to how to trade this strategy and what I've done is implemented a bot that did exactly this. So for example, if we go to the code of the bot, which by the way is in GitHub, you just have to go to my GitHub here, trading bot, and you just have to go to MQL5, profitable, and it's this version. I have a lot of versions with different uh, with different changes, but you just have to open this version. This is the code, and here you just have all the reports of each version. So this is the report of the last version, and you can see that. So let's explain the code. So as always in this kind of bots, is this MQL5 bots, what you have to do is to create handlers in order to take the ind indicators data. Then you have to create uh, arrays in order to store the indicator data. So for example, the RSI has only one value and we only need one array, but the MACD has two values and we need two, two arrays. The same happens with the stochastic, it has two values and we need two arrays. Then this variable is for storing the candles. We have here a, a definition of the maximum candles that I want to check in. You will see that later. So this is to open positions here this is the object that will open positions this is the variable in which we are going to store the ticket of each position this is to check whether some time has passed between position this is uh, something to change the stop loss yeah so these two as for are for changing the stop loss and we will see that later so we will see all these functions later but first we are going to go uh, to the bot so whenever the bot starts what we have to do is to declare the well to load the indicators the handlers uh, the handlers of the indicators so we do that by calling this kind of function irsi imacd stochastic, etc we have to tell the current symbol the current period and then the the values that you want to use this guy uses specific values which are these ones and those ones are the ones i used so all in the price close, except in the stochastic, which is a mode, uh, simple moving average, and the low high. So then we set all the arrays as series, and that's it for the init function. So whenever the bot starts, it will do this once. So now on every tick, what we do is that we uh, load uh, the, the indicator data. So we store uh, with the copy buffer function the indicator data in the different arrays. So for example, here we are storing that in the RSI, we are storing that in the MACD, in the MACD signal, the stock main, etc. So as you can see here, uh, the RSI is only, has only one value, so we don't have to put main line on signal line. We just put the zero and we will get the zero value. This is important because here we are saying 
on which value do we want to start taking taking the information. So for example, in the last candle, this candle is not closed and it's moving. So if you put here zero, you are going to take the last candle. So you are going to take this one. But if you put here a three, what this means is that you are not only going to take this one, but you are going to take this one, this one, and this one, all those ones, the third, uh, the third, the, the three first ones. So in the main line, well, in the cup, in the MACD happens the same. But in this case, we are not taking the last one. We are taking the previous one, which is closed and it doesn't move. But again, we are taking three previous values. The same, the same happens with the stochastic, etc. Here with the copy rates, we are copying the, the candles. We are basically lowering the candles. So with this, we say that we want to take the previous candle, not the last one, the last one that is moving, no, the previous that is closed, and we want to take a maximum amount of 15 candles. So we are storing this in the candles and that's it. So we are going to ignore this big if for the moment and we are going to check how do we open the positions. So for example, we have to check whether the MACD is saying to buy, the RSI is saying to buy, the stochastic is saying to buy, and this is just for checking that we don't have two operations open at the same time. And this is for checking that some time has passed between operations. So uh, let's go to see this function. So for example, the MACD buy is just checking if there was a cross. So if there was a cross, then we open a position. The RSI is checking if the value is above 50 and the same happens in the cell. And the stochastic is checking if it's bigger than 25 or is less than 75. So these are the conditions in the in these functions that are here. And as I said before, these other things are for checking for not having two operations open at the same time and having some time between operations. So once we uh, the bot says, hey, I can open a position. What we do is first taking the ask value. So we take the uh, information of the symbol, uh, the ask, and then we take the number of digits that we want uh, to have. So for example, here, we are. I think that we are just taking five digits, which are the digits that this uh, chart has. So for example, here, the ask will have the current value of the ask. And then to set the stop loss, we have to take the last minimum. So for example, if we go here, if we open this position, the stop loss must be in the lowest value in in the close in the close range in a close range you have to take the lowest value so for example here the lowest value is this one and the stop loss would be here so that's how you set the stop loss but whenever you use the whenever you open a, a cell position you have to take the last high so that's why we use this variable of max candle so we are only taking into account 15 candles and you can see how i take the last minimum and last maximum in this function so here I just iterate over the the candles and I just check that the high is the highest one and the minimum is the minimum one. So that's how you do it. And yeah, once you take the stop loss, the thing that you have to do is to open the position. And uh, let's let's ignore for the moment this. And here, what I do is to have a dynamic lottage. Thanks to that dynamic lottage the amount of earnings are uh, bigger because we change the lottage every time we get more money. So how do I do this? So for example, I just set here a function get lottage that what it does is that depending on the balance of your account, you are going to have a, a lottage or another. So we are saying that for each thousand dollars or euros, you will use a lottage of 0 0.1. So if you have 20, well, $10,000, you will use a, a, a one, a one lottage. You will use one lottage. And if you have 20,000, you would use two. If you have 100,000, you would use 10. So that's how you do this. And it's very simple. The thing is that I only increase the lottage, but if our balance is the, is a 70% below the highest point, then we move <laughs> the lottage a little bit down other because otherwise it will decrease very fast. So that's the thing with the dynamic lottage. And if we continue with the how to open the positions, here I just take the symbol, I just put the ask, I just put the stop loss, 
and we don't put uh, take profit. Why? Here comes this part. So here in this first line of the if, what we do is that we check if the position is opened. In case the, in case the position is open, uh, well, in case the position is not open, we put this variable to zero. So we allow this part of the code to open other positions. But in case we already have a position open, we need to check if we have to close it. And how do we close it? So first of all, I have to check the type of the of the position, if it is a sell or, or a buy. And for example, if it is a buy, I check if the RSI is overbought and if the stochastic is overbought. In these cases, uh, well, if this happens, I will close the position with this. I restart this variable and I close the position with this uh, line. The same happens with the with the cell here. As you can see, there's an OR gate, which is saying that if we have a cell function, a cell position, and the RSI is oversold and the stochastic is oversold, we have to close the position. But let's say that this is saying that we don't need to close the position. So, for example, what can happen is that uh, we are on a big, big, big profit, and if we don't do anything, like if these conditions are not met, what can, what can happen is that the price can bounce and go. Uh, <laughs> go on to another place and make us lose money when we had a lot of profit. So what I do here is that if we have a lot of profit, what I do is that I change the stop loss to a position with where you get profit. So that's what I do here. So for example, we take the ask and the bid. And for example, if the position is buy, I'm going to change the, the trade to the next uh, stop loss. And here is where uh, I set this next stop loss. So in order to explain this, I think it's better to do a, a draw. So for example, let's say that you open a position here and you want to reach this point, which is, for example, if the stop loss is here, the stop loss is here, this distance multiplied by 1.175 is the distance between the gold price and the the price where you open the position. So what you do is that also this list distance multiplied by 1.1 is the distance where you are going to put the new stop loss if you reach this point. Whenever you reach this point, you are going to put the new stop loss here. So you end up getting profit. So that's how this works. And yeah, so this is how you set this and you check this here. So for example, if we are in a position buy, we have to check if we reach the gold price. In this case, in case that we reach the gold price, what we are going to do is to modify the position to change the stop loss. And we are going to put a new goal, which is that distance that we put it here. So for example, this distance. Now we are going to add this, put the stop loss here, but the gold price in order to put it here is going to be that distance again up. So if we reach this point, the stop loss will be modified and will be put here. So we are getting always more and more profits if the price continues to go up or go down in case of a sell. So that's for this. And I think that's almost everything. Well, here the timer in order to, al to don't allow uh, to have positions very close together. And again, let's check now the 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 report and here you can see that we started with 20,000 and we here end up with somewhere around 100,000 so for example 90,000 somewhere around 90,000 so the thing of this uh, strategy is that it is good because the the success ratio is 44 percent out of 1,000 operations so it's not bad the thing is that you earn more when you win than you than when you lose. That's why this ends up being profitable because you earn more when you win. So that's the strategy. And again, if you want to check this, you can come here, take the, the bot. The bot is the this last version, the version five, and you can basically take it. You can basically modify it and you can do whatever and you can retest it or do whatever you want. And yeah, I forgot to say that the test is done in 10 years. So for example, it is done from 2010 until 2021. So that's the test. And again, take the bot, do whatever you want. And yeah, I think that was everything for this video. As you can see, this guy is showing a trading strategy which is working, but it is not perfect.
So, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Mm-hmm. Oh.